Hello guys and welcome back to another Windows tutorial video. Now today we're going to be taking a look at a video that's been requested by a lot of you guys um, over the past few weeks and that is as you can probably tell from the title uh, Windows Server 2003. Uh, now first off um, I just want to say sorry if I sound um, a little bit sick. I mentioned this uh, in my last video. I still am getting over uh, a bit of a cold so if I don't sound um, you know normal to you guys uh, that is why but uh, I am feeling you know much better than before but anyway I, let's just get on with the video um, I do want to thank all you guys um, for suggesting this this was actually uh, requested by I think three people and probably even more um, but the three names that I have here are Leo LD Quenflo and DHF 299 now sorry if I pronounce any of your names wrong but um, these are the uh, three people that have uh, wanted me to, to uh, do this video and like I said there's probably uh, some more out there um, but yeah so that's what we're gonna be doing today we're gonna be taking a look at Windows Server 2003 which was the successor to Windows Server 2000 um, now Windows Server 2000 was based off of uh, the, the um, you know Windows 2000 code base obviously because it got that name um, but Windows Server 2003 was the server version of Windows XP. Um, it's very similar to Windows XP. Uh, it, it's sometimes uh, considered to be a better, more stable version of Windows XP. Um, and it was released on April 24th, 2003. And uh, a fun fact about this is that uh, Windows Vista, which was the... Uh, next major version of Windows after XP was uh, developed using solely Windows Server 2003 uh, code. Originally, um, they did use Windows XP code, but they did uh, a development reset towards, I believe, halfway through, and they decided to use Windows Server 2003 code. So, all right, so yeah, let's just jump right into the virtual machine creation process here. Um, now I am going to have all the links you're going to need down below in the video description um, Which is just going to be to the Windows Server 2003 ISO um, Now what I'm not going to be able to provide is a product key and the reason for that is is simply because Microsoft is actually still providing support for Windows Server 2003 um, So it would probably be considered software piracy if I give you guys um, a product key, so I don't really want to be doing any of that. That is uh, with all that uh, out of the way Let's just jump right into the the uh, virtual machine creation process. Now I'm gonna be using VMware Workstation 11 um, You can use whatever virtual machine software that you want to use um, Or you can just do this on a real server because that's probably what's gonna you know be you know kind of useful to most you guys that that, that want to do this is you, you might want to do it on, on like a real server um, but yeah, so I'm just going to uh, click on create a new virtual machine and one thing I should mention is as I mentioned in all of my Windows tutorials is that VMware Workstation is very different from something like VirtualBox or Microsoft Virtual PC or something like that. So what you see here is not necessarily going to be exactly the same in all those other um, uh, you know different programs, but you know it's going to give you the same result. But uh, this process here is going to be a, a little bit different. So I'm just going to choose the typical or the recommended option. I'm going to click on next, and I'm going to choose I will install the operating system later. Even though we have this option uh, to put an ISO in here, it's usually best to just to go this way so we can customize it more. Um, and we're going to click on next. And for the guest operating system, I'm actually going to choose Windows Server 2003, but the ISO is for the Enterprise Edition. And just to be extra safe, I'm going to choose the X64 edition of the Enterprise, you know, version because I believe this ISO is for the X64 edition. Um, but it's always, I mean, it's it would be perfectly fine if you install a, an X86 operating system on a 64-bit computer, but. Um, yeah, just to be safe, I'm going to uh, make it a 64-bit VM, but make sure that you choose uh, the Enterprise version as that is what the uh, actual ISO is for. And once you have all that configured, you just want to click on the Next button, and I'm going to click on Next again uh, with that name there. And I'm going to uh, store the disk as a single file. I'm actually just going to leave it at 40 gigabytes because I think that's uh, plenty for a server operating system. 
and we're going to click on customize hardware now you'll see that it has uh, already allocated one gig of ram to the vm and that is just because it is a uh, enterprise edition if it's if it was uh, the standard um, edition it actually allocates somewhere down here so it's a good thing that you so basically if you um, are not able to, or if it doesn't auto allocate it for you you want to make sure that, that you're giving it at least 1024 megabytes and one processor now you can change these values if you want but these are uh, the bare minimum I'm just gonna leave them like this and we're gonna go down to the CD drive and you're gonna use an ISO image file and you're going to browse to that ISO that you downloaded. And if you haven't done that, again, the link's going to be down below. And once you have that selected, you're going to click on the close button and then finish. And it's going to pop up with a new virtual machine. And all we have to do from here is just click on power on. There's no, you know, date setting back or anything like that. This is um, a full final release version of Windows. So we don't have to deal with, you know, setting the date back or anything like that. Um, but yeah, so uh, here we are. Um, as I always mention, times are way faster in a virtual machine than they are on a real computer. Uh, so if you're using uh, a real computer, uh, your times are going to depend on you know your your uh, processor speed and, and your hard disk read and, and write speed and the amount of RAM you have, etc. Um, so I just want to make you aware of that. But so anyway, here we are at the setup. Uh, this is probably gonna look very similar to anyone who has uh, installed any version of Windows NT before it's you know pretty you know basic uh, we just have to uh, press on the enter key and we have to press F8 to agree to the license agreement and yeah you will see here it says uh, x64 edition so I'm guessing you know it's uh, the x64 edition and this is for Windows Server 2003 R2 standard edition Enterprise Edition, Standard X64 Edition, and Enterprise X64 Edition. So we're just going to press F8, I agree. We're going to press Enter to install in the unpartitioned space. And we're going to format using the NTFS file system. I'm actually just going to choose Quick because we are in uh, a virtual machine and we don't need to actually uh, check the actual sectors of the hard drive. Um, but if, but if, you're, if you're doing it on, on a real computer, it would probably be best uh, to choose um, actual or the full format. And now it's going to uh, check the drive and it's going to copy the files over. And so I'm just going to let this do that. And now it's going to initialize the Windows configuration. And we're just going to press enter to reboot the computer. And uh, once we do that, you know, from now on, it's probably going to look very similar uh, to any Windows XP style setup. Um, you see, we have uh, a you know sort of Windows XP style boot screen it just says Windows Server 2003 um, and we're gonna get to uh, a screen that looks just like the XP setup but it's in gray as you're gonna see here yeah so um, just to kind of uh, I guess indicate that it's you know a server instead of well Windows XP but yeah so this can take a while especially since this is the enterprise version where it has like a, a lot more stuff to install um, while it's doing this, I, I guess I could tell you about uh, the different editions of Windows Server 2003 they had. Um, from what it looks like, they had three different main editions. One was called Standard, one was Enterprise, the one we have here, and the you know biggest one, or uh, the most advanced one, was Data Center. Now, the Standard Edition was aimed towards small to medium-sized businesses, uh, and it you know had some things like for file and printer sharing and... Uh, office secure inter internet connectivity um, and yeah you know basic things like that um, and it was also capable of addressing up to 32 gigs of RAM um, and it I from what it looks like here it had uh, both a 32 and a 64 bit version now the enterprise edition was aimed towards medium to large businesses and it's a full function server operating system uh, that supports up to eight physical processors so you could have eight you know like not cores but actual processors uh, is inside of one server and it could um, you know pr and that would allow it to use some enterprise class features such as eight node clustering using the Microsoft cluster server and it actually pr um, use support for up to 64 gigs of RAM now the data center version was basically for you know the best you know or, or, or like for the most advanced businesses this is like the best of the best version you can get 
Um, it supports a maximum of 32 physical processors. And a, again, those aren't cores, those are actual processors. Um, and 64 gigs of RAM. So you can have 64 gigs of RAM in this thing. Um, and yeah, so basically, uh, and oh, it also supports eight known clustering, just like uh, the um, Enterprise Edition. So yeah, that's basically the uh, you know a, a sort of technical overview of the three different editions. So yeah, here we are at um, the regional and language options. This is basically just like XP. You just want to press next, type in your name and your company or your organization if you have one. And yeah, so here we're going to get uh, to the licensing thing, where we're going to have to choose. Uh, the, the uh, I, I guess licensing mode so in order to avoid licensing agreement use licensing which is located in administrative tools to record the number of client access licenses purchased so we're probably going to choose I'm actually just going to choose the second option here I'm going to click on next and we're going to enter in the computer name so we'll call this server 2003 and we don't want to have an admin password we're going to choose, we're in the Eastern time zone, so let's find that. I always forget where that is in this list. There it is. Nope, that one. And we're clicking next. And so, yeah, that is basically it. Um, I don't believe, hopefully, uh, with the uh, with the whole product key thing, hopefully there's not, uh, like, a bunch of licensing stuff we have to deal with. Um, hopefully there will be an option where we just have to not enter in any key uh, and we can just, you know, like uh, like I, I can show you uh, the actual operating system without entering a key. Um, but yeah, so I believe that is basically all I really can mention in the meantime. So I'm probably just going to pause the video here and, and I'm uh, going to let it finish up. And I'm going to come back once it is finished. Alright, so we're at um, another option here where we have to choose uh, the networking settings. Now we're just going to choose the uh, first option, which is for the typical settings. We're going to make it not part of a domain, and we're, um, I'm just going to call it a work group. You know, you can change that if you want. Um, and it's going to continue copying files, so I'll be right back once it's at the next prompt. All right, so the virtual machine has just restarted here, and uh, it's going to be booting up again. I believe the rest of the setup is just um, very similar to the XP setup. We'll just see what happens next. So we got the same uh, gray screen. Okay, so we got one that's just starting up. Uh, maybe it's done already. It would actually be pretty cool if it's already done. Um, you can see that we have uh, Enterprise Edition. All right, so we're just going to press Control Alt Delete to log on. So I'm just going to go up here to Insert uh, Control Alt Delete. We're just going to press on OK since we did not put a password on the admin account. It's going to set up a bunch of personalized settings and yeah, there we go. So, oh, it does appear that, that this is actually Windows Server 2003 R2. So, um, I guess, yeah, we'll just go ahead and, uh, you know, go through with this installation. Um, so, yeah, we're going to uh, click on Next. And it's so just going to copy files. Okay, we'll click Next. And it's going to uh, begin copying those files. So, um, while it's doing that, I guess I saw it complain about that our uh, screen resolution was too low. We can probably change that. We'll go, uh, we'll go 1920 by 1080, and I'll make this full screen. So there we go. We'll keep that. So that's going to copy files over, and it looks like it's done. So yeah, uh, I guess when a server 2003 R2 was not, uh, you know, a paid upgrade. Uh, so we're going to click on finish. And it does have some post setup security updates. So we're going to have to uh, um, install some uh, critical security updates and then configure automatic updates. So, we'll, yeah, we'll cl click on update the server. And, yeah, so this is uh, the server manager thing where we can, you know, do things uh, like add roles to the server. Um, you know, and like manage server roles, you can open up uh, administrative tools, things like that. Um, basically, as, as you can probably tell, this is um, it doesn't look uh, like as graphical as Windows XP would. Uh, there's not really that much on here. You know, it's uh, kind of stripped down 
in the terms of like you know user features but you would you would not really be using this as a client operating system this is intended for a server so you have um a lot more administrative tools in here uh, such as uh, remote desktops uh, not not this remote desktop but remote desktops which uh, looks kind of interesting I'm just gonna launch it just to see what it is yes yeah, so I'm guessing we can just use this to okay it allows you to connect the terminal servers that's pretty self-explanatory so I don't have a, a you know an active terminal server on my network so it's not gonna be able to find anything but yeah so so, so that is pretty cool of course I'm not gonna go through all of these features we'll click on cancel um but yeah I think that is pretty much it I will just run a winver command just to show you you know that yeah we are here running Windows Server 2003 version 5.2 service pack 2 uh, you'll see that the uh, copyright date is 2006 so and yeah it, it, it hasn't asked me to enter in any product key so um, I believe that this is you know not activated or anything which is kind of nice because I'm sure um, that you know most of you if you're just using this uh, in a virtual machine it's just to you know uh, take a look at it uh, and you'll see how the um, the operating system looked but if you're doing this on a real server um, uh, like an older server uh, you can probably you know figure out how to uh, obtain a license if you want to or just get you know uh, a much newer version of, of uh, you know a Windows server if you want to um, but yeah I think it's just about gonna wrap it up for this video again thanks to all you guys uh, who suggested this video um, yeah, as you know those suggestions do really help um, and yeah if you guys have any suggestions of your own uh, be sure to leave them down in, in the comments below um, it's just I, I just always enjoy reading what you guys have to say um, and yeah guys I think, I think it's just, just about it uh, again thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.